Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our second lab of environmental monitoring and modeling. My name is Sean Levick. I'll be guiding you through this tutorial. Today, we're going to get deeper into Google's Earth Engine, and I'd like to start by acknowledging the Google Earth Engine team and especially their development of the Earth Engine beginning curriculum, which is a very nice starting point for getting into Earth Engine. <clears throat> so this lab too is accessible through the LearnLine practical site. You can also reach it by going to my website, geospatialecology.com and coming down to lab two under teaching. The um, prerequisites are that you've completed lab one and already have a Earth Engine account. So please everyone log into your Earth Engine account by navigating to code.earthengine.google.com and you should have a clear script in the in the script window. Now um, we went through this yesterday, but just to go into a bit more detail, this is a really nice image provided by the Google Earth Engine team, which um, shows all the different functions that are available within the Earth Engine platform. So as discussed yesterday, the environment is dominated by the large mapping window. Within that, we have tools for zooming in and out. We have geometry tools in the upper left corner. Over on the right, we have the layer manager tab. Three windows on the top. The first consists of the asset manager, script manager, the docs, and um, the search bar at the top. Within the code editor, we have space for writing code, as well as dedicated space for imports. We have the possibility here to export our script as a URL, save the script, run the script, and to clear it again. Top right hand panel um, consists of the inspector, the console, and the tasks. So there's here's a bit of detail on what um, each of these areas is for. And point two also covers some more basic JavaScript commands. We touched on this yesterday, and just to pick up a few points, remember that in JavaScript programming language, we use two forward slashes to indicate comment lines. These start with two forward slashes and are ignored by the, the processor, so we can use these to write comments to ourselves and to others. Sometimes we might like to write quite extensive comments, and if that goes on to a second line, it can cause problems. So we can use a forward slash and an asterisk like this, star to demarcate multi-line comments. I won't go through the rest of these now. We're going to jump straight through onto getting started with images. And a little different today. Yesterday we, we started with Sentinel-2 imagery, but today we're going to have a look at some elevation data. So make sure you have a clear script, um, starting a new session. If you have an existing script, save it and use the clear script option under reset. And um, let's start by navigating to somewhere of interest. For today, uh, let's head over to Kekadu National Park, Northern Territory, Australia. Kekadu is a very extensive national park in the Northern Territory, tropical landscape, lots of wetlands, and nice rocky, hilly regions. Um, search for elevation and click on SRTM digital elevation data 30 meters. Let's have a look. We want elevation data. Google is very strong in search, of course. So if we want to search for elevation data, we have a number of options coming up. Today we're going to work with the SRTM digital elevation data. So let's click on that. That will bring up some background information on the data product. SRTM stands for Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, SRTM. 
and it was an international research effort to obtain digital elevation models on a near global scale. This version of SRTM has a resolution of one arc second, which approximates 30 meters on the ground. Um, this was really a fantastic data set, the first worldwide um, elevation data set, 30 meter resolution. If you would like some more background on the mission, you can click on this link here. And that'll take you to a publication by Tom Farr et al. Um, covering that data set. Let's import it. Click the blue import button and we'll see in our script window that imports one entry, the variable image, image SRTM data has been added. We come down to um, our point three here. We've already clicked import and let's rename the default variable image to be SRTM. So all we do is click in this box on image and type SRTM and hit enter. Now, um, <clears throat> let's add the, let's print um, this data to the console. So highlight this little piece of code, copy it, paste it in line one, and say run. We'll see that that's now printed to the console. We have the image, USGS, SRTM, it's one band. If we look at the bands, elevation is the data stored within the band. Let's have a look at our next step. Um, it's great that we've printed that to the console, but we haven't added it to the map yet. The command for adding a layer to the map is map.addLayer. Be careful with your, your um, uppercases here, um, uppercase M for map and for layer. Easiest to just to copy it, paste it into line two. And when we hit run, that map will now be loaded over our region of interest. Uh, pretty unsatisfying at first look, all washed out in gray. That's because we haven't defined any visualization parameters. So let's come back and um, look at this um, inspector tab. So in order to add, to, to obtain a better visualization, we need a better color stretch. So let's copy this line paste it into line three, or actually we'll just paste that over line two, um, so we don't duplicate the layer. Map dot add layer SRTM min zero max 3000. Well, this min and max really depends on your area of interest. And um, if you don't know the region too well, then it would be good to explore it a bit with the inspector. So let's go over to layers and um, let's make this a bit more visible using the um, transparency slider. Click on the hand over on the left hand side here and click on inspector. Now let's click around a bit in Kakadu National Park. If we click near the ocean, we'll get an elevation of four meters as we would expect, low lying areas. If we come a bit more inland, slightly higher elevation, we'll see we range from 100 meters, 240 meters, 300 meters. So we'd probably be safe leaving this min value as zero, making the max. Let's go with, um, well, we can make it a thousand meters just to be safe. And let's rerun that script. And now we see quite a lot more detail in our image. If we thought that's too conservative, we can make that 500, run it again. And now we see a lot more, more detail. Let's zoom in a bit. You can see some very interesting topographic features and quite an escarpment, a sharp edge dropping down to the floodplains of Kakadu below. Let's go back to our, um, our tutorial. 
And uh, just a note, at the end of each of these little sections, you'll see a script link. If you click that link, that will open the, the script within your Earth Engine environment. Now, um, let's, let's apply step number four, or section four. Let's apply a computation to an image. So pan over to Kakadu National Park, where there are some nice elevation differences. And let's add a simple computation for example, a threshold above a certain elevation. The example here is to create a variable high ground. SRTM GT, that stands for greater than, SRTM greater than 2000 meters. Map add layer high, that's our variable high, above 2000 meters. Well, the area we're working with is quite low, so let's copy the script and paste it in here. But um, let's alter this elevation a bit because everywhere, well, nowhere in our region is taller than 2,000 meters. So let's make that rather 200 meters. And let's rename this to above 200 meters too. Uh, let's run that. Clicking run. And here we see a mask in white. These are all the areas that are have an elevation of above 200 meters. So we can switch these off a bit. Um, remember with our background map, we can also switch to the, the satellite view. And we can use the slider to just have a look at where these high elevation areas are, taller than 2,000 meters. As we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that these areas marked out in white are really these very rocky areas, the hill country in Kakadu. So that's great. Um, what's next in our script? Do another computation to compute slope from the elevation data and display it on the map as a separate layer. Also add a third parameter to the add layer method which names the layer. Okay, so let's just copy this. We're going to make a variable slope, earth engine function terrain dot slope. We're going to perform that on the SRTM data. We're then going to add this layer slope to the map. To the map, we're going to define a min and max of zero and sixty degrees, and we're going to call that layer slope. So let's copy that, paste it in line seven. Let's run that. First, we'll load the elevation again. Add our threshold mask, and here comes the slope layer on top. So let's switch off the mask and elevation, zoom in a bit more. We see that very sharp edge of the escarpment. We can use the slider just to have a look at the image underneath. Very nicely we pick up that sharp changes in elevation using the slope function. As a last step, um, if we go back to um, our layers, you'll see we have like layer one here, for example, that was when we first added the elevation data. It's very nice always to give a, a proper name to the elevation and other layers that we're adding. So let's just copy this again and let's go over our script, paste that. So we're going to make variable slope. I'm going to add layer to our map SRTM. We decided that 500 was a better value. And now we're going to call the elevation layer DEM for digital elevation model. 
we're going to add the layer slope again, min and max are suitable, and we're going to call that slope. Now when we run, we'll have two layers in our layer tab, one for slope and one for dim. And that's just a much neater approach. So a few things that, that you can try. Um, search for a specific location, an area that you know to have interesting elevation changes, use the inspector to estimate the value range, and play around a bit with the visualization parameters. Um, one thing we can try also, it's not in the documentation, but you'll see here that we've called a function earth engine terrain dot slope and if we could head over to the docs section and go down till we see ee terrain over here if we open that we'll see that there are other commands we can call to work on elevation data uh, aspect for example and hillshade for example so maybe let's just just try that let's come down a few lines and let's add a comment so that we know what we're doing. Let's call that give hillshade a try. And how are we going to do this? We're going to create a variable called hillshade. And we're going to use the function earth engine terrain dot hillshade. And we're going to perform that on our SRTM image. And then we want to add it to the map. So we'll use map dot add layer hillshade. Um, now for min and max values, when we create a hill shaded image, the um, image is grayscale. So we know that the min and max, max values, um, a good range is probably 0 to 255. And we're going to call this hill shade. We're going to do that by and then don't forget to add semicolon at the end of the line. Then that should produce a nice hill shade for us. We hit run. Elevation dot load up. Slope layer loads up. And here we have our hill shade view. So the hill shade is just great for looking at the shape of the landscape. Use your hand tool over here navigate around the scene a bit. Um, if we go to the Layers tab, we'll see we have Hill Shade, Slope and Dem. Switch off Dem and Slope for now. And as we <coughs> play with the visibility a bit, we can get the effect of, of draping the image over the terrain. You can sort of see some structure in the landscape as we, as we move it around. It brings it to life bit more, gives it a bit of a three-dimensional perspective. So that's um, great for visualization. Have a look at some of this, this rock country, really remote landscapes, very special places in Kakadu. Now um, let's look at our next step. We're going to apply a spatial reducer. Select the polygon geometry tool and draw a triangle or a more complex polygon on the map and print the mean value for the region. So let's copy this script and let's paste over here. to 500 dim map add layer geometry 
Remember that we haven't defined our geometry yet, so let's do that. So let's um, click on the polygon tool, geometry, and um, let's start off just by clicking a shape like this, for example. You'll see that the variable geometry is now defined. And we should be able to just run that. If we flick to the console, mean elevation, we can see that the mean elevation for this block is 298 meters. If we wanted to look at a different area, we have a few options. We could, easiest one would just be to delete that geometry and draw it somewhere else, like over here. And if we then run the script again, we'll now get the mean elevation for that block. So that's a great, great way to, to quickly summarize pixel values um, by region. So let's remove these layers and zoom out a bit. This brings us to the end of the section dealing with um, elevation data. Very useful to, to have this information in any environmental monitoring study. But the next part of our script is going to now look at bringing in Landsat 8 imagery. We're going to be using the Landsat 8 top of atmosphere um, image collection. And I'd like you to go through the rest of this tutorial in your own time. Going using the, the system that we've just been, been following, read each section very carefully, copy and paste the commands into the script window. Let's read, let's clear the script so that you have a clean script to start with. And um, try and follow each of these steps. It's very important that when you're copying the code block, you copy everything that's within these little gray boxes, otherwise the codes will not run. And even though we're copying and pasting, we want you please to be looking at trying to understand what the different commands are actually doing um, and how they are querying the data cube. So thanks very much. Um, we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Good luck.